the policy we made clear to David Kielson that he's not to sign off or grant. We also want it to go to everybody involved. Well, right. Okay, so there are two things that could occur here then. Somebody could just simply not have a personnel change form and still be within Mass 168, Mass General Law. 268. 268, excuse me. And then the, another pathway that could result in errors or confusion is somebody comes through under this against 268, meaning that they have been contracted. You can't do both. Um, right, do exactly. Work. So from my perspective, it would be great to have that additional policy clarified in writing too and then sent up to. But we've done this, I, and I mean we should do it, but we've had Ed come in as recently as a year or two ago and all boards meeting and go through the whole process of what they're supposed to do. And it's a, it got, the, the ones we had problems with this time were informal, you know, people just moving and shifting and not getting their positions cleared through PCFs and everything else. So the point of this is the memo goes out to everybody, should go out to all department heads again, and especially those who would um, make paychecks. A uh, second avenue of that was that we you need to make it clear that the vacancy needs to be post job post. And I know certain jobs have to continue. Um, we can make a recommendation for an emergency fill and carry that forward to the same PCF until a permanent position is hired. And we recommended that happen in the case where a position was filled uh, without uh, posting it. We stopped it going that way. It will be posted and a temporary person put into that position until the posting uh, is established and other people as well as anybody who wants to apply for it can apply for it. Okay. Not a lot of money, but it's just the way it goes. No, but I think the greater risk here is the sense of equity that, or inequity that may derive from somebody shifting just, in form. I, mean, I just want to reiterate this too, is this PCF form, we've always required three signatures. We got out of sync a little bit here and there, but this is not a new regulation. This is the existing regulations that were established many years ago that um, the department had signs it, which follows procedures, uh, make sure it's done properly for procedures purposes, it goes to the finance committee to make sure the funding is in place, it's not new funding needed, and the third is the ability of people to uh, make the appointment. Mm -hmm. Good. I wonder if we could maybe ask Mr. Stahl to put a date on this memo and also the date of the meeting. It says October 6th, but it could be 1865. So it's uh, 2010. Right, but I don't want to change the, his wording. So I'll on, the other, on the other letter, it has the date on it. Okay. Good. On the one that's called memorandum. Okay, because mine just has the text with no dates. Yeah. And, and Jess, if you want, uh, you know, the next all boards meeting, I, I think myself and Mike will presently present the proper procedures for posting and reiterate this mm -hmm. uh, at a meeting so everybody's brought to uh, stop on. I think it's a great idea. Can we put that down on that November 16th meeting then? That we'll do that as well. We'll go through the drill again. Sure. Thank you, Ed. Okay, anything else on the... PCF policy. Moving on then to discussion items, moving to the new town hall. And uh, Mike brought this up the, towards the end of the meeting last week that we are getting rather close, if you will, to moving over there. The November 2nd election will be held here. However, we're getting ready for that building to be open, usable. Do you have a sense that at this point? Some we poured the um, elevated sidewalk. That's completed today. Uh, we had to stop uh, Mr. McDougal from putting his foot. Thought, uh, thought he was in Hollywood, perhaps. Couldn't get your hand. Um, you threatened him. <laughs> I mean, couldn't get your hands in there, huh, David? Uh, tomorrow we'll pour the entry at large, uh, and then from that point on, we'll uh, we, we've already stripped all the undesirable soils in the first parking lot. What's the map for that you're putting down the road? It's uh, geotextiles uh, is to um, help um, maintain a uh, parking lot that doesn't need. Okay. And because the soils are, uh, there are some clay pockets that might have 
the mist coming down, that'll help carry the weight evenly throughout the whole parking lot. Okay. And also deal with any high water. Okay. Did I? Do you ask when? Are we going to be ready to move anytime soon? Or the building? I'm no. Pretty sure. Yes. No, no. But like I, November. I, 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 I can't speak to the committee, but we're, we're trying to do as much as we can. Well, is it the parking lot that's holding us up, or is it? Some no, the parking lot. No, actually, we're ahead. So the this week here is a good week. We've got good weather. We're moving along. The last two weeks we got interrupted. With the rain. Yeah, but I mean, inside of the, whatever happened with the water in the basement? I looked at it today. It looked okay. The there's last a, two rainfalls didn't show up. Yeah, there's a valve that's very close to the floor. That's the water. That's the shut off valve. And it, it's down off the valve. It leaks a little bit, but there's a little darkness in the concrete in and around right that, at that spot. Or it could be coming that's out. That's the original concrete, too. Yeah, so I mean, that's the only spot I saw today. But I mean, they're, but they're still working. It's on that committee's right. um, agenda to address. Um, but, but when is it by the contract? When is that building supposed to be delivered to us? Okay, it was, it was an approximate date, and then it was we had to be fluid with it because our forces were doing a lot of work. Right. And the last meeting, uh, it was agreed upon by everybody. It's going to be on or approximately. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Thanksgiving. Okay, but that's very contingent upon the weather and right. a bunch of other conditions. So that's like a ballpark date. Yeah. Now, Ed, are you going to pave the parking lot now? I'm going to pave the base. Okay. Base course top. And if there's any uh, settling over the winter, we can shim it and then put the top on in the spring. Okay. Uh, the weather permitting, I'd probably will paint it. You know. Okay. Because we need handicap stall and stuff like that. Okay. Okay. So um, we might have to get uh, the lines in on a temporary basis and take over to the Okay. And we settled the issue with the fire. I would just wait that. I mean, because we, we went down 20 up to 3 feet and put the back it pretty well, but it's going to get a little settlement in the front of the soil consistency. Mm -hmm. And the parking issue, is that sort of clarified with the fire department? Where the, the department will drop their vehicles up, and there's a space for them, and so is that all been sort of That's the original spot, we're not touching it. Right okay. We're only doing parking for the town. Right. And we might develop some on the side, but uh, current parking hasn't been changed from the fire department. Okay, so you've got to keep in mind that we're not going to finish the job this winter. We're going to finish it probably in the spring. We have to the front. Uh, there's some sidewalks that we have to uh, more added recently. Side of the building, um, so we, you know the stuff that's being added. So we just have to address it. But we won't finish the whole site work until probably springtime. We're hoping to have the building open as soon as possible. Okay. So I think for this, we need more definition of that. I mean, I'm not speaking for the building; they're in charge. I'm just talking about where we are. You know, we're moving ahead of what we normally have uh, for space. Okay. okay. So. Exactly, because there's two things here. I mean, there's going to that building and all the stuff over there, but I'm more interested in the strategy of moving out of here. How are we going to do that? Right. If we get down to the minutiae of things like that, we'll be here a while. I'm just going to give you the overview of what I'm working on right now to hopefully get us over there around about Thanksgiving, or December 1st, if that comes to pass. <clears throat> we have, um, we're getting quotes from movers. Um, there's one in your packet. We've only gotten one, but we've asked for three. Um, so basically, that's to move the entire town hall. This particular quote is to move the town hall in one day. There'd be three trucks, nine men, and they would rotate. So basically, one truck would be filled, would be moved over, unloaded, another truck would pull in, get filled, move over. Um, it doesn't include the attic because we're uncertain of how much stuff's going to go through the attic. The goal is that we may end up trying to. Uh, the record retention law to dispose of a lot of material and not try to take a lot of that stuff. So department heads um, will be getting up there and hopefully going through that stuff and determining what needs to be brought. And then once we know that, then we'll have to add that onto here, but it shouldn't be that much more. Um, <clears throat> for the inside of the building, the, um, the phone lines, the construction for the phone line for the, for the box, we have a 50 uh, line box is going to be finished, but at some point we actually have to move the phone lines over. So some of these things have to be done when we have a date certain. So we have to give the phone company a date certain, we have to give the Secretary of State a date certain, 
and we have to get charter a day certain for when we're actually disconnecting and moving over. But in the meantime, we're getting everything, we're getting the phone lines, uh, the, the box installed. Um, Verizon is, uh, I mean, excuse me, Charter has done uh, the outside, um, and well, I think they've done the conduit, and they need to come and pull it in, and then they have to go inside and do the inside, uh, set up the IT service or the, uh, the excuse me, the cable stuff inside. Um, when we talk about the uh, technology proposal, one of the things that we're going to need to have is the installation of the IT. So although we have a network set up over here, we're going to have to physically move it over there. So there shouldn't be, in terms of re reconfiguring the network, that shouldn't have to happen because it'll stay intact, but we physically have to move the computers and you know, put them up. So that, you know, that is going to be, you know, we don't, we don't know exactly how that's going to go, but hopefully that will be a solution. So to have from your perspective then, you said the three things in which, for which we need a date certain, which Secretary of State, Charter, and Verizon. What are the areas that could be done that are independent of that? Well, we're at, what we're trying to do is put the, I guess you'd call it the infrastructure in place to make these things happen. So basically right now, we're, you know, the whole building will be wired, the, the phone lines will be brought up to the building, everything will be done, and it'll be a matter of once we know the date, you know, we make a phone call and then hopefully those things get transitioned over. I don't know that once the infrastructure is built or the hardwiring is done, I think in terms of making the switch, it's going to be more of an administrative thing from their perspective, from the company's perspective. Mm -hmm. But even that, I mean, getting Verizon out here to do the construction took, I think, six weeks. And we had, we called them at the end of August, and they had already come out and designed the project. And it still took till, I think, last week before they came out. So I'm just saying, you know, you never, you can't, you know, with a company like Verizon or Charter, um, you know, you don't know that it's going to be flawless in terms of implementation. Well, we do have that uh, Thomas call yeah, from Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, in order to make this as, as smooth as we can, it almost seems like the committee's got to come up with a last date certain, right. whether it's January 15th January, or, right. or or February 1st, and then we go with that date and, and we start timelining these things so that you can pick the date certain. But the committee's got to come up with a worst case scenario of a date that can't be exceeded, and then we start making our plans based on that instead of a bet. Right now, you know, optimistically, Thanksgiving, well, that we don't want optimistic, we want worst case scenario right. so that we can make our plans from there. And then we pick that as our moving date and go from there, whatever that date is. But, so we need, we need from the committee a worst case scenario date. And they're meeting on Thursday night, and I'm going to go to that meeting, and that's, I think, getting to be one of the final, and I'm, I see that they've got the punch list on there. So I assume they'll talk about that at the meeting. Um, the last thing that we're working on is the furniture and what I'm calling out other equipment, which is cleaning equipment, um, equipment in the building that I, I guess I'm not exactly sure what we're going to end up with. If we're going to have fire extinguishers, if we're going to have, you know, what, what's going to be left for us to supply because a lot of the things are getting done in the project. So when I go to the meeting on Thursday night, there's also a topic for wish lists. So we've been kind of making a list just to see if those are things we're going to have to look at after the contract is ended. Um, but right now, the furniture and equipment, you remember we voted 20000 on the capital plan. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we made a list of the, um, the needs of the, of the town hall, including um, mostly we need uh, filing space. So a lot of filing cabinets and, mm -hmm. and types of storage for um, maps and, and vital records and such. So we've got those, we've got everything on a list, we're getting prices, and then we're basically going to prioritize the list. I mean, this price to move is over there does not seem certainly unreasonable. Absolutely not. We and and the it. next question is how much to move the IT stuff over there? That we have to determine when we talk to And the then where are we going to get, and then where, where are we taking, are we taking the money from that $20,000 capital to move us? For the IT, I'm not going No, for the whole thing. That's the question I think well, the board has to answer. Well, the, the money for that was for the furnishing, so I hope that you're not going to consider taking the money But we got to come up with the money from somewhere. Mm -hmm. from somewhere right. What about the kitchen? So, kitchen's all set. Kitchen's all set. Right. Okay, so you, bought, you bought the kitchen sink in here. <laughs> okay, so we need to come up with some, some, some money from some source, be it this 3800 oh, oh, or Whoops, did I say that? Yes, you did. Not with I, it was a round number. So. <laughs> okay. What's the, what, 3,000? It's okay, 
it's just a couple. Oh. But, you know. Okay, may I suggest something? I, I noticed on the, this is a ballpark given. We should have a firm price, not a blue seat, not a ballpark, if I may suggest. Because this is, they could go crazy because they could go 25, 50% more. Source, and we need to get with Dave Kielsen and no, finance. You're going to have to go finance. Finance. Yeah. So you're going to have to. Ed? I have several questions. The question is, I looked at the quote you have here. I, I don't know how much it is. I'm not sure Association, but we need to understand if they're in good standing or not, and those those things, right? Well, Bert Hilson, Bert Hilson, and, and, and if you find out the hours, we did it right. But I don't know how much to charge for the man. Well, why don't we well, not put on one thing? Labor and prevailing wages are close to thirty-five dollars. We're talking the numbers. That's baloney. We okay. can't do that. Okay. Okay. So let's move on from that then. Okay, so we back to Diana's and Mike's point. We need a date certain, or worst case scenario date, and maybe we can then talk to the other providers, Charter Verizon, to let them know so they can schedule their time. I'm assuming that the construction unit of Verizon is different than the service unit, yes, yes. so maybe it won't be a six week delay. Well, I'm hoping you have better success than we have, but in dealing with them, the construction projects, I think a lot of delay. Okay. All right. So that's um, anything else, Diana? You can think of offhand. Yeah, Anybody I else? I just wanted to kind of give you an example. Of um, the only other thing that um, that I'm working on is the security system. We have a security system in this building. It's what they call a. I think it's. I don't know exactly what they call it, but basically, it's not a security system that's monitored by a company. It's actually hardwired into dispatch. And since we will not be above dispatch anymore, I'm not sure how we're going to do that. But we need to. One idea might be on this specific day, we're already closed on Fridays, so we could use that as one of the moving days to minimize some of the disruption. Right. Well, I guess on my mind, I have December 1st just because I've heard the Thanksgiving day too. Now, whether that is going to be, as Mike said, you know, too anticipatory, like maybe we need to back it up. But I thought we could move perhaps on Monday, on Wednesday and Thursday. I mean, it's <clears throat> possible that we're going to have to shut down the town, you know, the operations for a day or two. Mm -hmm. Right. So I was thinking if we did it on Wednesday, First, then we did Monday, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then hopefully Monday we'll be over there. Okay. All right, anything further on the move? Um, just a thought on that Friday move, which is a good idea, but then you've got people who aren't working, and you're going to need, you're probably going to need our employees over there telling people where they, yeah, yeah. where the stuff goes. That's good. We, 
did this once before, and especially when you move the phone lines and that, it doesn't always work the way you hope it does. Right. But if you could talk with Verizon to talk to look you up with maybe two or three cell phones that automatically take the town number, feed it into it, so at least if you have people over there working, they're picking up the phones. Mm -hmm. Good, very, very good point. Sure. Okay, well, thanks. Uh, moving on then to the technology proposal, as I think you're all aware, Diana had sent out a request for possible proposers to just get a list of people in the area whom we understand to meet our criteria, which means that they're bonded, which means that they are have worked with municipalities and, and those things. And Diana, do you want to just say anything about this list here? Well, the basically, uh, we Six. also have in your package a scope of work for IT professional services. So, would you like us to read that to the audience? I don't know. I don't know. We'll probably put it up on our website, too. In addition oh. to, these are the list of names of possible proposers are people that have either already asked about the possibility of providing technical, uh, IT service to us or have names that have been given us to his recommendations. So we will send it out to all of these people, but we'll also put it on the website and on probably on Channel 5. I mean, we'll do a little bit more outreach. Um, but I just, in terms of the scope of work, I, the difference in this and, and what we were doing previously, the only real difference is that, uh, well, for one thing, I do put that the town departments are operating on separate servers in four locations with an approximate total of 20 workstations. Um, and that is kind of, uh, and that's including the fire, the highway, the town hall. And they did include the police department in terms of just explaining that they had another server. Um, but again, we talked about not uh, bringing the police department in at this point. Um, but the other thing, that at the bottom of the IT services to include, what Jess and I have talked about, and I think some of the board members have kind of also um, addressed this, but uh, training somebody in the town to be kind of the, the, um, like a troubleshooter, basically. So we don't have to call the IT person every single time somebody presses a button and their computer doesn't start up. Um, so Reggie has offered to do that, and I'm suggesting that as part of the scope work for the IT professional that we have in there, that they are to train the town IT technician, and that basically that person will be on staff to troubleshoot, provide routine maintenance for computer hardware and software, perform data recovery if possible, and provide technical assistance to users in the town, and carry out web administration, which Reggie is doing right now for the most part. Right. I would like to say to the support of Reggie, I did ask her to take a look at that situation, the reported situation in the tax collector's office, and she interacted with the software provider, which has to do with the payroll system, and was able to get that problem resolved. It had to do with people's Social security numbers and other private information being too accessible, so that has been cleared up. She's also working on another problem right now in the assessor's office, which is the interconnectedness of the two workstations. So, so I would be asking that the IT person um, understand that they have a direct contact with the consultant, uh, that individual, and that the consultant would provide training to that person as necessary so that they can work together, basically, in conjunction. With regard to the IT people, I think it would be advantageous to the town to hire someone with at least four or five technicians in the field, and also to have 24-7 service available uh, with an X amount of hours of a call. That's got to be you know, a given, because we can't have a one or two man show, and if they go on vacation or they get ill or whatever, uh, we're sitting here saying, what do we do? So we, 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 we've got to take care of ourselves. We've got to figure out how to do that. And that would be uh, some of the good things. Who does IT services for East Hampton? Pardon me? They're in house. Excuse me? They're in house. They have a big person But when, you do, when you're doing the scope of work, should we include as part of the scope that this has got to get moved over? How are you going to, should we be soliciting a bid that includes moving us over there? Well, the way that I was looking at this is more of a professional services that would be that they would basically give us a fee for service, um, like an hourly rate. And then I thought well, once we get that person, we could talk to them about. But you're not going to have much time to do that. Stuff. Could we buy services from East Hampton? We tried that already. Mayor Mike won't let it go. He said he's too busy. He's busy full time. Mm -hmm. I talked to the mayor. That's a no go. He works for the period. Yeah. They talk about regionalization all the time. 
you know, we hired a part-time person that's supported by those staff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, that's a good thought, and yeah, we already tried that. I thought of that too, like, I just don't know. Because, I mean, this could be a fairly that. expensive proposition to move this IT stuff over there. Yeah. And I if you're doing it on an hourly rate. I know. Well, I just was concerned about confusing the two issues a little bit on which, this, but. Um, which brings up the prevailing wage issue again. I'm not sure. I'm not clear yeah. they have to have a mailing wage on it. They're not an employee contracts. of the I thought that was just for and, construction, not for uh, uh, You know, and I don't know. I, it's I, don't, I didn't think that it was on service contracts. And this contract would be less than 5000 which means it doesn't go under 30 days. So it's a service contract. It's not a yeah, construction contract. Yeah, but I mean, we don't want to come in and pay 30 I mean, the, the rate is obviously a lot lower than $35 an hour on this. Moving contract. We don't want to pay thirty five. Right. Yeah. No, I know, but I mean, it's in general terms, it's more less than the prevailing wage. Yeah, I will check on the prevailing wage um, for service contracts because I, I think that thirty B um, prevailing wage is definitely in one forty nine, which is constru public construction, and thirty thirty nine M, which is public works construction. But I'm not sure that in service contracts under thirty B, you have to pay. pay I know, I know anything for like a licensed electrician, carpenter, right, plumber. That would be a it's from dollar service. one. Right. They've got to pay for building rate, but I don't know about this. I'm sorry. That's right. Yeah, yeah. For construction, you do. But yeah. I, I, I guess I'm not. I wasn't familiar that you had to do service contracts. All right. Okay. So anything else? Anything else in the technology proposal? Okay. Uh, the committee handbook, I think you might all have seen the email that went out this afternoon. Reggie has just about finished formatting that, and she's going to send it out electronically, or she will give it to us at our next meeting. That's the committee handbook for us to review. We have one other item, too. Doug has asked for any comments on that committee handbook? Okay, Doug has asked for just a little bit of air time to read something. Two things, if one may. Uh, quickly put on the agenda under executive session for our next meeting i'd like to address this board in regard to the Doral property on strong road and i know we're going to schedule that with our beautiful boss so i would i would request that okay also uh, i had a little thing happen uh, I read this last meeting, however, we weren't televised, and to show the due to respect to all the people that were involved in this thing right here, I would like to read it again if I may. Okay. To the Southampton Board of Selectmen. On October the 9th, at approximately 4 p.m., we called the Southampton Emergency Dispatch to request an ambulance to our house for my 89-year-old father-in-law was experiencing shortness of breath. Within minutes, offer, Officer David Latour arrived and started taking down vital information. Very shortly after Officer Latour's arrival, uh, Officer David Neal arrived and prepared a route for the ambulance attendants to remove the patient by means of a stretcher. The ambulance arrived shortly at the Southampton uh, Fire Department with Chief Hyde and Deputy Chief Bill Kalita. My father-in-law was transported to Bay State Medical Center where he is now in stable condition. He is home now, thanks to these guys. Uh, thanks to the professional efforts of our emergency responders, I'm very happy to praise all the players in this emergency. And I want to just list them. The emergency dispatcher, very kindly, took down all the information and dispatched police and ambulance personnel. The police were the first responders taking down vital information and ensuring a means of egress for the fire department ambulance staff to maneuver the stretcher. The ambulance staff quickly stabilized the patient and transported him to the hospital. The family deeply appreciates the professionalism of these responders. I would appreciate that each of the five people involved in this incident receive a copy of this letter for his or her personal file Thank you, the family of Douglas Blanchard. Thank you very much, Bill, and for everybody. Uh, you guys did a wonderful, wonderful job. I want to ship some down. You guys are right there. Thank you so very much. That's it. Okay, thank you, Doug. Oh, yeah. Uh, need no further business, we'll take the motion to dissolve. Don't move.
Second. In favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.